In the movie The Princess Bride, the dread pirate Roberts is able to defeat the mastermind Vizzini because he built up an immunity to poison. That's a fairy tale, though. Someone becoming immune to a deadly poison in real life is inconceivable. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward and this is Science Friction, where I break down the real science behind comic book and sci-fi superpowers and tell you how to become superhuman. Poison Ivy regularly uses her toxic kiss to incapacitate men, and Poison Lipstick has been a TV staple of femme fatales for years, from Firefly's Saffron to Doctor Who's River Song. In comic books and television, these women never suffer the same ill effects their victims do. In real life, if you were to apply a skin-penetrating poison to your own skin, you would be killed or incapacitated well before you could ever apply it to somebody else, unless you were immune to it. The idea of building up an immunity to poisons has been around a long time. The term Mithridatism refers to the practice of building up an immunity to a toxin by gradually exposing yourself to non-lethal amounts of it. The term comes from Mithridates VI, who ruled Pontus, a region of Asia Minor, in 2nd century BC. He gave the Romans a run for their money. He tried to avoid assassination by building up immunity to poisons over the period of his life. He was so effective at it that when the Romans finally defeated him, he poisoned himself to avoid capture, but couldn't die. So he had to have a soldier run him through with a sword. But this story is half history and half legend. Is anybody really practicing Mithridatism? Yes. In Myanmar, there are snake handlers that tattoo themselves with snake venom in order to build up a resistance to bites. And in the West, there are people that inject themselves with venom. The first and most famous of which was Bill Haast, a snake handler and venom expert that started inoculating himself with different venoms at the age of 38. It enabled him to survive bites that would have killed ordinary men. He lived until 2011, dying of natural causes at the age of 100. People like Bill and Steve Ludwin, who is currently injecting himself with snake venom, believe that the poison exercises their immune system, making them stronger, healthier, and more resistant to disease and illness than other human beings. But snake venom couldn't have been used by the Dread Pirate Roberts because it only works when it makes contact with the blood. If you don't have any cuts in your mouth, you can safely drink snake venom and not feel any ill effects. And it wouldn't work for a femme fatale because they need a poison that can be absorbed through the skin. These ladies need a substance they can build a resistance to, but is also poisonous to the touch. They'd do well to study the arsenic eaters of Styria. Arsenic is one of the world's deadliest poisons and was used regularly in the Middle Ages as a very effective assassination tool. A tablespoon is all you need to kill someone, and it can be absorbed through the skin. The arsenic eaters of Styria were a group of peasants in the mid-19th century living in Lower Austria. They believed that arsenic improved their health and enhanced their beauty, so they took small amounts of it several times a week. Over time, they grew resistant and started taking more and more, until eventually some of them were regularly taking doses that would kill a normal human being. But before you go dropping arsenic, and most likely dropping dead, this phenomenon was widely reported, but there were no scientific studies done to prove exactly what the arsenic eaters were doing and how they were doing it. There are some studies showing that animals can grow a resistance to arsenic, but it would still be very dangerous for a human being to try to build up a significant resistance within a single lifetime. But some people have built up resistance over multiple lifetimes. The indigenous people of Argentina living in the Andes have spent thousands of years in an environment that has naturally high levels of arsenic. Studies have shown that over the generations, a mutant gene has been selected for that allows them to flush out arsenic toxins. I'm not saying that the Argentine women of the Andes are a clan of deadly, superhuman poison lipstick wearing femme fatales like poison ivy. I'm just saying they could be. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more episodes, and check out some of the previous ones where I break down how to shapeshift, reconfigure molecules, and heal like Wolverine. And be sure to tell me what superpower you want.